let me ask a question. And my question is this. Uh, Kevin, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Matt, how you doing? Doing good, Ron. Okay. So the question came up uh, for Ask the Pastor, and I'm going to really seriously answer the question. Again, I'm going to take a little bit of time, five minutes, and go through some of the history of this so you understand it. Put the question up. Go ahead and put the question up. It says, you mentioned on the Daily Show, that's Bible Discovery, that we should not be celebrating any pagan feast. My mentioning of that was related to worshiping pagan gods and celebrating pagan feasts, which worship gods that aren't God, breaking the second commandment. Back to the question. It is well known that Christmas and Easter, as well as Halloween, and many other common holidays have roots in pagan rituals. Actually, Paul, they don't. Uh, some of them do, some of them don't. Um, it is important for us to realize how they come into play on this. But the assumption that you made is that they're all pagan. There are many things in the Christian realm that we consider pagan that should not be in the church and that should not be a part of the church. For example, there are some old hymns that are very questionable as far as what their theology is. So we, Janice and I, when we had our church and opened it up and all that, there are certain hymns we avoided and didn't sing because we didn't think they were correct. Our feeling is we worship Jesus Christ, God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God in three persons. That's what we believe. We believe in the Holy Spirit who fulfills us and uses us. We believe in the Word of God, which is unique. My son calls it the special revelation. Um, well, he calls... Jesus, the special revelation, which I totally agree with. And I call the Bible the special revelation, but I also call Jesus a special revelation. Anyway, let's take the first one and consider it Easter. Easter is called Pascha or Pascha. And that's a word which means resurrection. Resurrection. So Easter itself is not named after an Easter God. So to keep that in mind, okay? Now, Esther, in the Bible, a lot of people equate that to worshiping her. And some people did. But the worship of Easter began in the second century, okay? The Dutch word is Oster. The German word is Ostern. It's Easter. That's the English word. And the resurrection of Jesus is what we're worshiping. So that's... Easter. In fact, in 325 AD, the Council of Nicaea, that's a really interesting study, the Council of the Church are really interesting. 325 AD, now that's only 225 years, maybe 250 years, maybe 260 years after Jesus lived, died, and resurrected. Um, Easter was celebrated, very interesting. Uh, it's celebrated as the first Sunday they declared in the Council of Nicaea, it should be celebrated the first Sunday after the first full moon of the spring equinox. So it's tied to the ancient lunar calendar. So Easter is a very important festival that the church has always, always worshipped. So it's just one of those things. Now, there are people like Easter bunnies and all that, which are pagan. <laughs> okay, I get it. But you don't throw the whole thing out because you've got a little root over here and a little root over there. Remember what John chapter 15 says. John chapter 15 says, if a root is seen, the father goes in and says, have a nice day, root, take a vacation. No, he goes in and prunes it. So we need to prune those things back and worship the resurrection of God. And by the way, the seventh day is called Sunday. It's a day of rest. It's not the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is technically from Friday night to Saturday night. But the seventh day was when, Jan, Acts 21, when they got together and before work and after work, they would celebrate Jesus Christ. So it's great. If they were farmers, they just celebrated Jesus Christ. That's Easter. Now, let's visit Christmas. Let's go to Christmas. Christmas was an interesting word. Christ mass. 
Christ is Messiah. Messiah and Mass. Mass is getting together. Getting together for Messiah. That's what Christmas means. Getting together for Messiah. Now, remember, there are five aspects of Jesus Christ. The Annunciation, the Incarnation, the Annunciation when Gabriel came to, to uh, Mary and said this is what's going to happen. And then the Immaculation when she was incarnated with God. And then the, well, with Jesus Christ. Then the Transfiguration on the, on the Mount of Transfiguration. We see Jesus Christ as he was an intercessory person, individual, between earth and heaven. We see Moses and we see Elijah who are in heaven, and we see the earth. They see it together. Remember what Peter wanted to do. Lord, we've got to build a booth for everybody. You know, that's Peter. And I'm like Peter in some ways. God said, no, listen. He said, what did he say? He said, these are the words of my son. Listen to him. That's the Bible. Listen to him. That's the transfiguration. Then there's the crucifixion. The crucifixion is Jesus allows himself to be crucified. Three days later, the resurrection. Okay, but the resurrection and the crucifixion are kind of one deal. So later on, he ascends to heaven, the ascension. So we've got the Annunciation, the Incarnation, Transfiguration, Crucifixion, and Ascension. If you want to throw in the resurrection, there are six you can before the ascension. But it's important for us to remember this is what we celebrate at the coming of Christ. So the coming of Christ is not just the appearance of a baby, but it's the appearance of God. It's the appearance of Emmanuel. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 says the same thing. Emmanuel, God with you. And the angel said to the shepherds in the field, go celebrate. Today is when Jesus Christ comes in. So celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ is not a wrong thing. It is right to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. And every Christmas I decide to do that. Celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Now, we don't know exactly when Christmas became Christmas. We don't really know that December the 25th became Christmas. We don't know that. But what we do know is at Christmas time, I do not celebrate giving of gifts. I do not celebrate the tree, which was established in Germany by Martin Luther. The evergreen tea, tree represented the um, Garden of Eden and the eternal life. That's the idea, the evergreen tree. It was the different trees of the Middle East that represented the gods that they carved down and worship. They're not the same tree, different trees. I'm just dealing with some things that people have said to me and, and people have claimed. So we need to understand that we need to read the Bible carefully. But at some point, somebody decided, well, this is a good day to celebrate Christmas, December 25th, and so they did that. Now, not every church, that was done in the 6th century between the East and West Church. The East and West Church decided to split it. They celebrated Christmas on the 7th day of January where they celebrated Christmas in the East, or rather in the West, um, on the December the 25th holiday. You can argue about that all day you want. You, while you're arguing, I'm going to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But the seventh day of the week, back to this, the seventh day of the week, I celebrate every Sunday the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then one Sunday a year, it's around the 25th. I don't know when the 25th is, but one Sunday a year I celebrate the, the big celebration is for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Very interesting because this year we didn't really do a lot of gift giving. It was awesome. That's Christmas. Now, perhaps the most interesting is Halloween. Let me ask you a question, Paul. Halloween. What does that stand for? Well, it's evil. It's evil evening. Actually, Halloween stands for hollow evening or holy evening. And people used to, in the mid-centuries and before then, dress up like saints. Now, I say saints, I use that word specifically, but dress up like disciples or dress up like people who were before them who loved the Lord. That was a church that imposed that tradition on Halloween. Now, that's why it's called Halloween, because holy evening. The actual worship was from a Gallic god, Samhain. He was worshipped on the 31st of October. And the 31st of October was the time they felt, the people who are pagans, that that's the closest that we are 
to the afterlife. They felt they could talk to dead people at that time. So there's been a lot of people who have built up witches and demons and all that in this space. But the church decided to take the worship of Samhain, by the way, and uh, they decided to take it and make it an evening of evil, but the church had decided to make it an evening of good, the celebration of the saints. And it seems that that celebration happened after the 7th century, which would have been before that the All Saints Day, which they worshiped, was May the 13th. Okay, so Halloween has been sort of taken over by the church, and Pope Boniface, he's the one in the 6th century, and that was when the big split was happening between East and West, but uh, East and West churches. But he decided November the 1st uh, to make uh, All Saints Day November the 1st. So that's the reason. On Halloween, I do not celebrate anything except I celebrate God. I celebrate, let me get to it here. I celebrate what the what Galatians chapter 5, beginning with verse 7, says. It says, listen carefully. You ran well who hindered you from obeying the truth. Obeying the truth. Obeying the truth. This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. A little sin messes up everything. I have confidence in you, Paul says, in the Lord, that you will have no other mind. He's talking about their minds. But he who troubles you shall bear his judgment. He who troubles you about these things shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, he's talking about circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? He's saying, is circumcision that important? Hmm. Then the offense of the cross has ceased. Hear me say this, Paul. You may not agree with me, but Paul, hear me say this. When we focus only on the physical, only on doing things that are physically right, first, we begin to skewer the cross and skewer ideas. But when our spirit is focused on doing the right things the right way, then all of a sudden things correct themselves. He says, I could wish that those who trouble you about circumcision would cut themselves off. Wow, Paul. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty, and I use this important, as an opportunity for the flesh. Do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the law is filled, fulfilled in one word, even this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you consume by each other. Christians are biting one another about these holidays. Then he says this, I say then, walk in the Spirit. Capital S. How do I do that? And you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the Spirit, Paul. You will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. If you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. I don't want to be under the law, do you? Hmm. Now, the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, wow, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, rivalries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in times past that 
those who persecute or practice such things, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Bible. Not me. Bible. But, verse 22. Everything, everybody likes to memorize this. What about before it? We just read. But, the fruit of the Spirit is, capital S is, love, joy, and peace. <laughs> the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. Long-suffering, kindness, gentleness, or goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and its desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Paul just answered the question. That's how we walk by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another. Do this, do this, do this, do this. Don't do that, don't do that. Not envying one another. Did you hear what he said about the fruit of the Spirit? So my thinking is, these holidays may have roots. And the other holidays around may have roots in evil. I like the way the church thought and continues to think. The church is people of the Lord Jesus Christ who follow the fruit of the Spirit. They are trying to practice the fruit of the Spirit. As am, as am I. We follow the fruit of the Spirit, we try to take everything and we turn it towards Jesus Christ. Paul said, whatever you believe, he said this in Colossians, set your mind on things above, not on things of this earth. You don't worship the pagans. You don't worship the gods. Second commandment, don't worship them. Our mind is set on Jesus Christ. So regardless of what I do, when I decide to make a party, when I decide to celebrate, Fourth of July is another pagan holiday. Did you know that? A lot of people are worshiping the country that God gave them. God gave them a country and they're worshiping the country. We don't worship the country. We thank Jesus for the gift of the country. I'm a U.S. citizen. That's what we thank God for. I'm also a Canadian citizen. So July the 1st is a pagan holiday. But I celebrate on those days, thank you, Lord, for what you have given. Very, very different in our attitudes towards these pagan holidays. So, Paul, let me just say that um, I believe we should not worship, like I said on the program, I believe we should not worship any gods but the God of Jesus Christ, God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what I believe. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm committed to. Okay, Kevin, your comments. Go ahead. So uh, just to keep it short and brief, but um, Pastor Rod, amen to everything you said, and I'm going to need a, a copy of all your notes there um, for <laughs> future reference. I'm not sure if I can retain everything you said, but uh, appreciate everything. Um, I just want to say a couple things. We are the light of the world, and a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, so it could bring light to the whole house. Right at the end of that portion of scripture, it says, uh, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. That's in Matthew five. You know, um, the way I see it is, and I've had people come up to me, especially about Halloween. That's one thing that I've continually had people come up to me about. And they're well-meaning Christians. They're people who love the Lord. So they want to stay as far from the devil as they possibly can stay. Right. And the enemy has tried to take this holiday as his own and and be glorified himself on it. And uh, we don't want to do that. Of course, we're Christians. But what if while we're busy telling them what they shouldn't do, they just see us as crazy and it does no good for anybody? We should be telling them about the love of Jesus Christ. They may still think we're crazy, but some of them may just realize that's exactly what they need. They need the love of Jesus Christ. So the way I see it, every opportunity we have to celebrate Jesus, we should take it. During Halloween season, our church will do a harvest festival or a trunk or treat or some way they're already out they're already going door to door trying to collect trying to grub off neighbors right get candy from them well what if they came through our parking lot and got 
a gospel coloring book? What if they got some candy? What if they got some smiles? What if they were loved and invited to kids' church that Sunday? It's an opportunity to be out. We've had Christians who said we should lock the doors, everybody in the house. You don't know what's going to happen. It's the enemy's night, that kind of thing. We're out there. We're going to let we're going to let the people of God know that there's a Jesus, there's a God who loves them. Amen. Amen. Uh, again, and people are already out doing what the world does, celebrating. But if we can uh, somehow encourage them in the things of God and share Jesus, just to show them some love, I believe we can bring. Of course, the Holy Spirit brings through us, but bringing uh, blessing, salvation, healing, and uh, outreach is the key. So whatever we do, we need to do it for the glory of the Lord. And again, God hasn't called us to uh, lock our doors and hide in the corner and um, and pray. You know, uh, of course we pray, but uh, but also we pray and we do, right? We are supposed to be, I believe, God wants us to be the answer of our own prayer sometimes by telling somebody about Jesus Christ. You want your loved one to know about Jesus, you go out and tell them about Jesus. God wants to use you in the process. Um, so all that to say, and I'm not sure... Uh, you probably have some follow-up questions or follow-up comments, but um, the way I see it is every opportunity to celebrate Jesus, we, we take it as the body of Christ. I love it, Kevin. That's the, you're, the perfect. That's 100%. That's what we did. We had the harvest parties, and they were awesome, awesome. when we had Amen. the church. They're great. And it's, it, people say it's the, I had somebody say to me, they, and there were a couple of people left the church because we had harvest parties. I said, well, we're gonna, you know, he said, well, it's the enemy's night. I said, no, it's not. It's not the enemy's <laughs> night. What did Jesus say? He said, all authority in heaven and earth have been given to me. So let's take that authority and let's call on Jesus Christ that night. We had great times. It was awesome. Anyway, uh, Matt, go ahead. Any comments? Yeah, you know, we were talking ahead of time before, before this, and I was saying, Rod, I'm really not going to comment because I've, I've heard a little bit of what you've, you've uh, said in the past about the holidays. So I know you were on top of it and you, you really were. So I, I can't amen you enough and I can't amen Pastor Kevin enough because he's saying what is exactly going through my mind. Any time that we can celebrate our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we should do that. I mean, we can do that every day, but uh, you know, when we can do that to the fullest, we should do that. And we just take advantage of the opportunities, not just being hearers of the word of God, but doers in Jesus' name. Excellent. Amen. Very good. That is excellent. Thank you, guys. Uh, it's good to have you. And I'm sorry that uh, we're late here, but uh, 4.56, what can I say? <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll see you again on Friday, and I'll report to you how this turns up, uh, how the Lord provided for us. And uh, so it's good. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you, as number 624 says. And may the Lord bless you and and give you peace as he writes his name on your life, your life, this week. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Pastor uh, Kevin and uh, Pastor Matt. So we'll talk to you guys later. See you later. Bye-bye.